Okay, micro contrast. Oh no, not another video of micro contrast. Yes. Now, I did a lowdown of all current production Nikkor lenses that are not sharp. And Nikon, well, Nikon make a lot of lenses, baby. And uh, I could only count eight out of all those Nikkor lenses that ain't sharp. In other words, they're poopy. And uh, that means that all these people out there, they're going, ah, how sharp is it? How sharp is it? You know, they're like, uh, they need to stop with that stuff. And uh, make an intelligent decision on a lens. If you can eliminate the unsharp stuff, then that means that there's all these other really important lens criteria, as I mentioned before, that are so important, like color saturation, micro contrast, um, resolving pairs, as far as MTF chart, will it resolve at uh, 10 lines per millimeter versus 40 lines per millimeter. And, you know, most people don't know how to read an MTF chart. That's fine. But uh, the question is, is, well, now I know that it's sharp. Should I buy it or not? Well, the question becomes, what's your budget? What do you plan on shooting with it? That obviously should have been covered already. But then the question becomes, all these other really, really awesome lens attributes that nobody talks about. And consider that was, is it sharp? Is it sharp? Is it sharp? Is it sharp? <gasps> what about micro contrast? Micro contrast is really detail gradation, which connotatively is resolution, but in fact is not resolution. So what the hell does that mean and what are we talking about? Micro contrast is capturing all the intermediate tonal range which contributes to the realism of the shot, especially in low contrast compositions. For example, like a pile of wood, you know, uh, like a snow that's in the shadow, you know, the uh, dark side of the barn that you're taking a picture of, for example, um, the other unilluminated side of someone's face, and people call this Zeiss Pop, but Zeiss does not uh, own this. I mean, there's some uh, great Nikkor lenses that have a lot of... Uh, micro contrasts that are incredible, have incredible uh, rendition. Uh, however, Canon doesn't have many of them. Um, so, uh, three attributes of depth. Perceptual depth due to tonal gradation, um, very important for low light and close uh, tonal foregra uh, foreground. So we have a translational depth, a perceptual depth, which is micro contrast, and we have rendered depth, which is for another discussion. But ultimately we've got three different varieties of depth. Bokeh depth, which is purely optical. You know what bokeh is. We have micro contrast depth or perceptual depth, which is electro optical. Electro optical, yes, lenses, you know, it has to do with uh, dielectric permeability and the magnetic, uh, dielectric permittivity and uh, magnetic permeability of the lens and the lens elements because that is what ED, ED glass is. It is doped glass that allows uh, for the elimination of chromatic aberration. Too many glass elements actually end up ruining the image, it flattens it out. It uh, wipes out uh, the deep uh, color saturation. Then we have render depth, which is due to lens construction, binocular disparity, whatnot. That's purely electrical. So we got bokeh, which is purely optical, micro contrast, which is electrical and optical, and then we have render depth, which is purely electrical. Yeah, actually, a lens is an electrical circuit. I've actually mentioned that. That's something you won't read anywhere else. I mean, what do you think the hell light is? It's longitudinal dielectric uh, rarefactions and pulses and transverse electrical. Ma yeah. A lens is actually an electrical circuit. Oh my god! Yeah, geez, maybe that's how photovoltaic cells work, you know, where light actually causes charge. Okay. Glass is a semiconductor. Oh my god! That means if light is electrical and glass is a semiconductor, then oh my god! That means that like a lens is like a circuit and like there are like good circuits and bad circuits and uh, that has to do with like crappy rendition outside of resolution, how sharp it is or how sharp it isn't. That means that uh, there are good circuits and there are bad circuits. Yeah, actually a lens is an electrical circuit. It's irrefutable. You can sit there and piss and moan about it all day long. You won't read about that anywhere else, but it's a hardcore, undeniable damn fact. You ask anybody that builds lenses, they'll say, well, ultimately, that's true. Anybody that argues that, just say, what's that stuff that they add to ED glass that changes? Uh, it's not refractor. It's not uh, based upon refraction. It's not the refractor of uh, index of the glass. That this glass is doped to actually change the way the light travels through the lens. Anyway, back to micro contrast. So, but micro contrast is certainly a confusing term. The same thing uh, that's been called micro contrast has been called lens contrast and local contrast and even uh, global contrast. And then there's other a uh, lot of completely different things that they've called it resolution 
and uh, a lot of things are confused with microcontrast. And uh, myself and a few other people have actually said uh, and believe that Nikon and Canon, for example, mud the waters uh, with these terminology and lexicon to dismiss the advantages of really, really good glass like Zeiss and Leica and Contax. Because you can have a sharp lens that just uh, looks like crap. It's like, well, that's a sharp lens. I mean, it's resolving at a uh, high order of uh, lines per millimeter, but uh, the color saturation and the depth looks like uh, crap. Um, referred to the lens mud. You know, shaded areas with very low uh, tones. You'll see a milky film appearance with a very bad micro contrast, such as the Sigma art lenses. The current Zeiss, not all Zeiss lenses have great micro contrast. Zeiss makes some dud damn lenses too. Uh, their current super expensive $4,000 beast, uh, the Zeiss Otis, a 55mm and 85mm, those lenses are really, really damn sharp. They're right, right at the top scale on sharpness. But uh, the images are washed out and they're flat. And uh, the 85, the 85 is the worst. It has bad micro contrast. The 55 is better, but it still isn't great. So I refer to this as a muddy lens, but I mean, you can capture, you can call it whatever the hell you want. Um, this cannot be added in post. Can't be added once you're sitting there in Photoshop or Lightroom. Uh, let's uh, say, for example, let's take two different lenses. Let's say the first one has a contrast of 99% between uh, the uh, the lines at uh, 10 lines per uh, per millimeter, but 50% at uh, 20 lines per millimeter. Now the second lens only has a contrast at uh, 10 lines per millimeter at 80%. Uh, but 70% to 20 lines per millimeter, and it goes all the way down to 50% at uh, 40 lines per millimeter. So which lens is sharper? Uh, the second one uh, is the, the sharper lens because it does resolve at 40 lines per millimeter, twice the limit of the first lens. So which lens has the better image quality? Well, the first one because the uh, image of the second lens has very low micro contrast and the contrast at 10 lines per millimeter or the level at which the detail is meaningful to the image of a human vision as it's printed on the screen and whatnot so that's the case so if I compare these two images on a computer screen for example at uh, two three or four megapixels you wouldn't see any fine detail on the second lens that's resolved but I uh, will you know be uh, you know shocked and sickened by a pale and unattractive rendering from the same so, in turn, you know, if the first example, the first lens, excuse me, would give you a better well-defined edges and uh, transitions making the image look three-dimensional or, uh, you know, have that pop, that micro-contrast. Um, so, when's a bad lens, an awesome lens? Pick any lens with a really bad chromatic aberration, like a 50mm uh, f1.4. Uh, wide open, this will give you all those nice uh, red and cyan fringes on the edge of the object. Um, but as I told you in the prior video, you know, that's the lens speaking to you. If the lens could actually talk to you, it'd be saying, you know, listen, ass, listen, listen, arsehole. You know, I'm actually rendering a three-dimensionality. And that is the case. Nobody likes that uh, purple and green and, uh, you know, fringing and uh, high contrast shots. But if you're actually to put on some glasses that are like uh, purple and green or uh, red and green whatnot, you would actually see that uh, that image pop right off the paper, and you go, oh, damn, that looks good. I mean, that is really dimensionality. But that's not how humans see. People don't want to see that uh, chromatic aberration, but the lens is accurately interpreting the dimensionality of what the hell it is seeing. It's just that the human beings, us critters, don't want to see that. And, uh, you know, like a hologram. A hologram is a two-dimensional image that has incredible depth. People think, well, it's still a two-dimensional print. How could it have three-dimensionality? Anybody that tells you that, you know, you should take the lens and shove it sideways up their fanny. They say, listen, ass, you know, listen, idiot. You know, a hologram is also two-dimensional. Um, most people have never seen a true art hologram. And my God, they're stunning. I mean, they're really, really deep. And the same is true of images that are actually on the paper. As I told you, three aspects of depth. You know, one's optical, one's electrical optical, and the other one's purely optical. Um, but yeah, that's a two-dimensional image also, but there's depth there. I mean, so uh, let's uh, talk about, uh, you know, some other examples uh, of that. Like silvery prints. I mean, back in the day, we used to do black and white photography. We'd talk about, uh, you know, things that were uh, 
render that they were purely silver. They weren't actually stark black and white because those prints look muddy as hell and awful. So if you want to make great black and white prints and you don't have a lens with great micro contrast, you are pissing in the wind, baby. You know, you obviously got to expose it right. You know, you got to do all that other stuff right. But if you don't have the micro contrast to begin with that's translated through the lens at the back of the sensor, then you're just pissing in the wind. Um, every lens design is a trade-off. Every lens designer will tell you that. It can be flat without chromatic aberration or pop with chromatic aberration and high contrast shots. Um, so I'll always take the, the damn latter. I'll take the chromatic aberration with the high color saturation and pop. I'll remove the color, the chromatic aberration and post, but you can't add that micro contrast on the flat lens that uh, has no micro contrast. Oh, so that was got, this lens has got no chromatic aberration. Yeah, the pictures are also washed out. This lens has got a lot of elements in it, baby, man. This lens is like, this lens is like me. It is just fat with glass. It is just loaded to the gills with glass. So too much emphasis is placed on image resolution, the amount of resolving data, rather than the quality of uh, the resolved data. You know, just like uh, a pile of pasta. It's like, well, if someone can turn on a gigantic pile of pasta, well, that's great. Well, how about, I'll have a tiny little portion of, like, some, uh, you know, some Master Chef lasagna. It's like going to McDonald's, someone says, well, I had this designer hamburger last night for $13. And you go, well, I can get 13, uh, you know, I can get 15 burgers for that at McDonald's. Like, well, that's great. It's processed crap. What do you want? Once you've eliminated, here's the amazing thing, oh my god, once you eliminate all these BS concerns about whether the lens is sharp or not, then you start to worry about other things. Not mean worry, but you concentrate on picking out a good lens that has awesome properties that has nothing to do with the actual resolution sharp, as well as connected to it in some ways. But um, color saturation, micro contrast, bokeh. Uh, you know, chromatic aberration, vignetting, blah, 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 blah. There's a whole list of important stuff in lenses. And resolution is only one of them, damn it. Only one. So the more intertonal detail uh, translated to the sensor to be re re recorded, the more perceived depth the image has. And this is undeniable. Uh, the same difference would be drawing many lines to make a picture. You know, you're, like, you're sitting there and you're trying to make a picture, you draw a lot of lines. So it's like, okay, well, that's great resolution. It's like, well, let's want micro contrast. Let's add some micro contrast. Because then you just got, you know, a piece of white paper with a bunch of lines on it. Well, let's add the micro contrast. Well, what's the difference between that? And it's like, okay, you've got a sharp image here rendered to someone's face, and it's a line drawing. Well, yeah, it's got no depth. It's really sharp. Okay? You imagine someone making a, a drawing of someone's face with a pencil. Okay? Line, 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 line. Okay. Oh, well, that's accurate. Okay. It's got no depth. It's sharp. Yeah, but it's sharp. It's accurate. That's not all that's important. Here's, let's take the side of that pencil and shade it in. Oh my god, the page jumps, the, the picture jumps right off the page. It's not a picture, it's a drawing. The drawing jumps right off the page. Oh shit, it makes so much sense now. God! Oh really? Yeah, but still, still a two-dimensional piece on a two-dimensional piece of paper, isn't it? You know, all these people that say, well, it's still, you know, it's a two-dimensional printing. Yeah, there's still three-dimensionality in there, you know, it's regarding... Binocular disparity, the fact that we've got eyeballs and that tonal gradation makes the image go boom, pop right off the page. It makes it beautiful also. You could take the most gorgeous supermodel, perfect lighting, perfect composition, but you take a crappy shot that's really sharp but had my bad micro contrast and poor color saturation, someone's going to go, eh, uh, uh, okay, yeah, that's a sharp shot, all right. You take the right lens and boom, wow, award winner. Micro contrast. Uh, so micro contrast analogously, be, analogously would be uh, the same image with the inner tonals between the dots filled up. You know, ever looked at a newspaper print, really, really, really close, and it's just like a bunch of little dots. Just imagine shading all that in, blending everything, and all those inner tonal values. So now it's like, wow, and that jumps right off the page. Depends on where you view it at too. Dots per inch. Viewing distance, all of that matters, obviously. But we're talking about all of those things being equal, which of course they never are. But if you don't have it to begin with, you know, you can't uh, make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, and you uh, you can't get milk you can't get milk uh, off of porcupine tits, or you know, there's some actually some southern saying like that. Um, <laughs> so 
The entire damn point of this is that most lenses today are sharp. So now it's time you actually thought about looking into the other important lens criteria to look out for. Y you think that's important? It's uh, very important. Because if you're just buying lenses based off sharpness, well then you're making a mistake. Because there's a lot of sharp lenses out there that uh, don't render that well. It's like, well it's sharp. Yeah, well sharpness isn't everything. Sharpness isn't everything. It's kind of like, uh, 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 um, kind of like looking at a dude that's like all full of muscles. You know, he's like taking steroids and all these women are going, oh my god, he's so hot. And then it turns out he's been taking all these roids for so long that, you know, nothing works anymore. You catch my drift, you get, you get my point as a good analogy. It's like, oh my god, he's so buff. Yeah, but uh, even taking roids for so long, uh, his junk don't work anymore. He, he got a, he's got a, he, he's a, let me see, he's got a limp pickle. A limp pickle. Oh. <laughs> Do you get the point? Same thing with the lenses here. Oh my God, it's so sharp. It's just like that bodybuilder that's uh, full of roids. It's got a limp pickle. You can't get it up. Bodybuilder can take a blue pill to take care of that, but these lenses can't take any pills to fix that problem. <laughs> that means you can't fix it in post-production either. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye. <laughs>